Hello, good afternoon. It's a deal for Zal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets. So, end of day review of the European markets and the US markets as well, Pulse NFP. Today is the 2nd of September, Friday, 2016, bringing you a review of the US and EU markets. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com and you can down, certainly download the uh, the app from the uh, Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so post NFP, let's uh, let's try and assess the uh, the actual uh, damage and see exactly uh, what's happened here in terms of uh, market uh, reaction. Okay, interesting. So in terms of economic data, let's just look at the actual uh, uh, market finish. So European market certainly very stellar. FTSE, what a rally! Wow. Okay, up more than two and a half percent, or almost two and a half percent, given the fact that it bounced off a pivot low of around six seven hundred, uh, almost uh, up to and uh, above uh, six nine hundred at uh, one time six nine thirty, I think, or six nine twenty eight was a pivot high, almost stopped out with stop loss at six nine three one. Uh, German DAX, you have German DAX as well, up uh, by 1.4%. French CAC, very strong, 2.3%. So impressive moves in Europe. Again, whether they interpret the fact that the Fed will not raise rates and they thinking, or well, they aren't thinking, they're interpreting that as potentially being uh, very, um, I'm not sure, hawkishly dovish because we had the euro certainly moving lower. So, And we have the Aussie and Kiwi certainly into resist. Well, certainly are under pressure as well. So... It certainly is very hard to uh, decipher in terms of whether the market's hawkishly dovish and ho dovishly hawkish, etc., etc. It's you have to read between the lines as a trader, especially a fundamental trader. It's one hell of a job. I'm telling you now, it certainly is one hell of a job. This week so far, I think I've navigated almost 90 points. But again, I have to confess, it's one hell of a challenge trying to navigate these markets from a fundamental perspective. Okay, so again, very very hard to navigate. That's all I can say very very hard especially in the fx in market and the indices market together okay in terms of the uh, the actual um, economic data now let's go through the uh, the chain of events okay in terms of today and let's try and put, paint a fundamental picture for you so we started off the day in the morning in terms of the asian markets overnight <clears throat> we had uh, the uh, shanghai flat okay we had the hang sang up 0.4 and the Nikkei more or less flat as well. Okay, everybody waiting for this uh, potential number. Okay, USD, JPY approaching 104. Uh, you have the Euro uh, was around 1.2. Aussie Kiwi certainly were down overnight given the fact that USD, JPY approaching that 104 level. Okay, in terms of data. Hmm, okay, interesting. Okay, let's start with data. Okay, so Italian GDP, okay, came in slightly better than expected. Okay, UK PMI construction data came out stronger than expected, but was negated uh, by um, a bearish um, uh, news flow from McCarthy and Stone. Potential profit warning, not profit warning, but yes, certainly a profit warning, but again, for forecasting the industry's demise going forward. Okay, European uh, PPI data certainly came in more or less in line. Okay. Uh, then obviously we focused on the NFP data. Now let's look at the NFP data. Average hourly earnings month to month weaker than expected. Okay, unemployment rate slightly increased, 4.9%. Okay, average weekly average hourly earnings 2.4%, slightly on the weaker side. Average hourly uh, weekly hours slightly on the weaker side. Non-farm payrolls came in at 151. Estimate was around 180. Okay, so again came on slightly weaker side. Trade balance as well. Came actually came in on the stronger side, okay. In terms of Canada as well, given the fact that Canada obviously has an influence, okay. Exports certainly stronger than expected, okay. Overall net net economic data from Canada on the stronger side, okay. In terms of ISM, certainly on the weaker side. Factory orders weaker side, okay. And uh, towards the close, we did actually get Mr. Lacus talking, and he said that the uh, economic data was sufficient enough for a potential rate hike, okay. And also Baker Hughes rig count certainly came in stronger. Uh, more rigs, okay, and therefore, again, will exert further pressure on oil. Oil prices have failed to really ignite a rally post the NFP, post comments with regards to Mr. Putin, uh, mentioning that there may well be a potential output freeze uh, agreement, even though he did negate the fact that Iran would be on board. Okay, so again, they want Iran out of the equation, and that's certainly, that didn't really go down well with the Saudis last time, and I can't see that going down well again in the future, especially with the war that's raging on. In Syria. Okay, now 
let's look at the technical picture first of all okay so let's look at the technical uh, picture now that we've actually explained the uh, fundamentals okay so daily chart uh, now before i go on to european equities it's important that i look at the euro chart because in reality european equities are just a reflection of the euro okay that's basically all it is it's, it's moving inverse of the euro usd so allow me to bring up the chart the euro usd here we go okay so daily chart the euro usd you had a pivot low 1.12 okay um 1.11 I can correct 1.1120 okay we bounced up to 1.1250 and then obviously we sold off now if I bring up the 60 minute chart give you a better understanding we've hit a pivot high here at 1.1250 okay we've come back in previous resistance now equals support okay looking to potentially bounce here now with Mr Lacker's comments I've been slightly cautious in terms of obviously forecasting this potential bounce but it certainly seems that uh, any hawkish uh, rhetoric certainly is factored in here I was expecting a potential sell-off down to the 1.120 level again. We're holding the 160 level and looking to potentially bounce from here. Okay. In terms of the euro, given the fact that we're into support now on the euro, you're looking for European indices to certainly flush and start their leg lower. So that's all that basically matters. Now, we've had a higher 1.1250. If I go to the German DAX, let's look at the German DAX. Let's look at the 10-minute chart to give you a better understanding here. As you can see here, once we re reach the 1.12 level, the uh, the German DAX certainly was under in trouble. As soon as the euro reversed and started moving to the downside, you can see the German DAX ignited. It was like a fire that lit underneath the German DAX. Uh, look at that rally. I mean, from 10,500 up to uh, 10,680. What a move. Okay, but now you're into resistance with the euro into support and the German DAX into resistance, and that certainly isn't a uh, <clears throat> a good uh, concoction. Okay, that's the best way of explaining it. it certainly, is not a good concoction. That's not something that you'd like to see. OK, so again, uh, you are looking at the German DAX being into resistance, looking for a reversal and looking for a move lower. OK, folks, that certainly is the best way of summing this up. So if the German DAX is in, in trouble and is into resistance, then you are looking at weakness uh, across the European spectrum, especially with the euro, obviously, into resistance as well. Let's bring up the French CAC. OK, French CAC, you can see we're into pivot R3 resistance, again, in indicating that you are looking at a potential sell off and weakness as well okay so again looking at a sell-off and looking for further weakness okay folks that's the best way of uh, describing that okay so looking for weakness and uh, looking for the market to certainly come under pressure okay right <clears throat> so french cac certainly into pivot r3 resistance again looking for weakness 60 minute chart certainly very bullish very very impressive and the daily chart, you clearly see we're into horizontal resistance now. You've actually closed the gap, folks, as well at 4450 odd uh, around that region. So, again, looking for weakness, okay? So, close gap fill and obviously risk aversion or risk off trade kicking, okay? So, French CAC into resistance. Now, whilst we're on the French CAC, let's look at the volatility index. The volatility index I find very interesting always, okay? So, the French CAC volatility index. If I go to the uh, volatility here, uh, I mean, the trend lines certainly are skewed now. Let me just get this corrected, okay? So you certainly have on the weekly chart uh, an area of uh, potential support, okay, on the weekly chart. So the VIX certainly into support on the weekly with the euro obviously into support as well. So again, looking for risk aversion, okay? Uh, in terms of the euro stocks as well, volatility, whilst we're here, let's see if we have this here. Unfortunately, we don't, so we'll ignore that for now. Okay, let's move on to the FTSE 100 now. Okay, so FTSE 100, looking at the weekly chart, first of all, let's see exactly where we stand. Back into that horizontal resistance, okay, on the weekly chart. Looking at the daily chart, the FTSE 100, again, realistically, is this your potential H&S top? Okay, given the fact that we've had stronger data as of late, it certainly negates the fact, and also given the fact that we've had sterling rally. Uh, what's interesting today is that uh, weaker oil and st stronger sterling certainly failed to keep the FTSE 100 at bay. If I bring up the chart of sterling for you. Okay, you can see sterling here, very, very impressive move. Still at the 1.1330 or 1.33 level, okay? So again, uh, an impressive rally in sterling and the fact that uh, we are not going to get a potential, um, any further rate cuts, okay? So again, looks like sterling wants to move higher and, and certainly wants to play out the inverted head and shoulders, okay? So your left shoulder, and there's your head, okay? Your right shoulder, and then obviously we're moving higher and looking to close the gap above on the, on the, on the back of the lack of a further QE, okay? So again, FTSE 100 is in trouble here. If I go back to the FTSE chart, looking at a daily, and I'm looking for a potential H&S formation. So head, obviously, is up here. 
looking for this right shoulder and then obviously looking for a flush lower if i take the pivot high take it to the neckline you're below that fib 75 percent provided we say below that fib 75 percent you have the, uh, high, a lower high potential or possibility not expecting a 69555 to be touched although we have hit the uh, 6925 zone which is impressive okay but again looking for a lower high and then looking for a flush lower okay folks so again keep that in mind um certainly keep open mind open minded again if oil starts to move higher starts to rip higher then certainly use a different ballpark altogether and we certainly have a different equation altogether as well 60 minute chart you certainly have a topping tail so again indicating a potential short squeeze and then obviously a failure and looking to potentially flush lower on the 60 minute chart 10 minute chart the FTSE 100 where you slashed or smashed through pivot s3 okay so again looking for r3 sorry r3 resistance sorry okay so again looking for a potential reversal and certainly exhaustion in the current trend okay that certainly is probably the best way of explaining it okay so that certainly certainly is the situation with regards to the FTSE looking for weakness looking for a move lower let's move on to the euro stocks now again euro stocks i'm currently sure okay short the euro stocks at this uh, around this 3080 zone okay looking for a flush lower on the uh, euro stocks on the back of given the fact that we have a stronger euro and given the fact that the french or the dax and the uh, french cac are both into resistance okay so again looking for weakness here okay looking for weakness now daily chart itself approaching resistance or into resistance given the fact that the french cac uh, like i explained the french cac and the german dax so it, projecting those weaknesses and if I take these pivot highs together, you are looking at a diagonal trend line resistance as well. You still have the unfilled gap left below. So again, 3,000 certainly is uh, beckoning and, and is certainly uh, calling. So again, looking for that gap to close below. Uh, any unfilled gaps certainly are not healthy going forward. So again, looking to target that gap at 3,000. Looking to potentially retest 3,055, the previous resistance zone. So again, watch out for that uh, level at 3,055. Uh, looking to test that support and obviously support down here at 3057 so again looking for that zone to be tested okay on the french cac so again it's all about the euro being into potential support okay looking for weakness there on the back of uh, of the euro into support as well looking at the v stocks uh, this is the v stocks euro stocks again vix uh, again into support so again looking for uh, a potential bounce here okay and also the French uh, French uh, Vista, French volatility of index as well into potential support. You have um, uh, horizontal support here. Okay, so again looking for a potential bounce, not far from gap fill uh, as well. Gap fill support. So again looking for weakness, looking for bearish price action here. Okay, so in terms of oil, let's bring up the price of oil. Okay, so again oil certainly has bounced, but again shortly bounced into previous support equals resistance. So again, looking for weakness here on the chart of oil, even though the rhetoric from Mr. Putin certainly hasn't helped either. OK, OK, folks, US dollar index as well. Let's bring the dollar index for you. Again, dollar index certainly hasn't. Um, uh, all, I mean, again, it's a reaction. So the dollar index certainly hasn't flushed. OK, certainly has bounced uh, and dollar buying certainly has ensued. OK, uh, 200 MA certainly has held. OK, so again, bias from my perspective would be considered to be bullish and you are looking for higher prices here okay so looking for higher prices on the dollar index it certainly seems especially with mr lacker's comments as well certainly a hawkish rhetoric uh, oil commodities etc all certainly uh, remain weak uh, and again looking for a sell-off so from my understanding my perspective certainly looking for weakness uh, on the equity specifically okay equities certainly are into uh, overbought territory and remain weak and looking for weaker prices okay on that note i uh, wish you all a good weekend be sure to visit cfts.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25 bonus 25 percent bonus also visit trade signal and uh, you can certainly uh, download the latest app from the google play and the apple app store good weekend to all